Hey everyone, welcome to our Customer X Speaker Series. Excited to have you here. I have David Coates with me from Border. My name is Becky Susco, and I'm the Marketing Program Manager for Awards at Trust Radius. We've partnered with Slap5 for our second year running to host the Customer X Impact Awards. The Customer X Impact Awards showcase customer marketing and advocates who drive big impacts on their organizations. It's a nomination-based award, and it has a whole vetting process and a whole panel of judges. Our second annual nominations go live on May 17th. Today, I'm joined with David Coates of Forder. David was our first ever Customer X Impact Award Acquisition Ace winner. This award specifically recognizes leaders who mobilize customers to drive new customer acquisition initiatives across all marketing and sales channels. David is the Director of Customer Marketing for Forder. His advocacy work was an integral role in closing multiple multi-million dollar deals in 2022. I'm absolutely thrilled to have him join me today. But before I hand over the light, let's go over some housekeeping items. Now, please get your questions ready. We'll be ready to answer them as they come in, or if anything, we'll get to it at the end. And today we're gonna to cover selling through advocacy programs to level up organizational success. And we have a bunch of questions lined up and ready to go. So I'm gonna turn it over to David, but before I do, I'm gonna do a quick icebreaker. So David, tell me, did, you find marketing or did marketing find you? That is a great question, Becky. And uh, welcome. Nice to see everyone. Thank you for joining today's session. Super happy to be here, of course. So um, I actually kind of went to college and did history and politics with no real idea of what I was going to do. Uh, I feel like kids nowadays have all these ideas and go to school specifically for a program. Um, I didn't know. So did postgrad uh, in public relations and did 15 years agency. That's how I moved from the UK to the US. Uh, you might have noticed a little accent going on here. Mm -hmm. um, we love the accent, by the way. Thank Keep you. you know, and yeah. and Vinay, yeah. carries, Vinay carries such a good accent as well, right? So uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. The, Brits, the Brits are everywhere, I guess. Um, and then to be honest, marketing really found me. I mean, I was doing PR and comms for a long time, w went from mm -hmm. agency onto corporate, and ended up working with the marketing team because they were trying to figure out ways to get customers to help us do things. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you're working with big Fortune 500 companies, it's not as easy as just knocking on the door and say, hey, can you do X, Y, Z? And so I ended up kind of working on some programming to actually work with the sales to take it in to meetings where we're like, hey, we would love to do these different activities, whether press releases or events. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, I love to do, I, I was never born to be a seller. I, I could never carry a quarter, but I loved working uh, with the with the marketing folks. And from there, this was like 2007 or eight, I guess, customer marketing wasn't even really a big thing back then, formally. Mm -hmm. uh, basically kind of started to build a path and uh, get to where I am right now. So it was definitely marketing found me rather than the way around. Yeah, well, tell us a little bit more about your role and about Forder and kind of give us a good background there. You've been in the CMA for a while. so Yeah, so joined Forter actually just about four years ago. June this year is my four-year anniversary. Um, wanted the experience of working for a growth company. So when I joined, it was 150 people. And what I would say, and I'm sure for folks who are listening to this today, they'll, they'll recognize this in themselves. I love the white space. I love kind of building programs and figuring out how to do stuff. And that was really one of the big attractions uh, for joining Falter was there was no customer marketing in place. Mm. They had these awesome retail brands um, who were their early customers. So I joined with 150 uh, folks. Um, it Falter is really in the retail space. So anybody on this call listening who has bought something online from mm -hmm. like Nordstrom or Adidas or Priceline, we're actually the company behind making sure that you are who you say you are and that mm -hmm. we're working with those retailers and merchants to approve your transaction. Nice. Um, and so really, you know, the combination of a growth company, white space, great list of customers um, has been a great ride for four years and working on everything from customer advisory boards to building out a Friends of Forta, which is our advocacy hub, mm -hmm. uh, which we did last year, to launching our first industry event, which is Impact. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just been this really 
a great ride and I was super happy to be able to submit for the customer XCon awards last year as well because the work we're doing I'm super proud yeah. of well speaking of the customer XCon the nomination form the whole process right joining us for the conference last fall can you give us a little insight on to why you chose to yeah. go through that process with us yeah and you know I'm, I'm glad you gave a sh shout out to slap five as well like the Jeff and Dana mm -hmm over there, um, and obviously with Vinay and you guys too, with Trust Radius, because in many respects, there's so many great people within the customer marketing community. I know Becky, you and I talked about it in the prep, that I've never met a group of people who are more interested in, in communicating, collaborating, giving back, like really boosting this community, mm -hmm. um, which is awesome. Yeah. But as you, as you alluded to, we all came from it from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. I've got a sales background, but there were people who were in product marketing or products, or maybe even in sales, or they were um, doing demand. And mm -hmm. they just gravitated towards, hey, I want to work first and foremost with customers. And I think the way that the market grew, you, I think it's becoming a case now where you can go to school to do customer marketing. Mm -hmm. But really, it was an organic thing that people kind of fell into. And mm -hmm. because of that, there was no real structure around, okay, so what officially is customer marketing? Mm -hmm. And if you think about the journey, like, for, exam for example, our friends on the demand side of the house have been on, right, over the last 20 mm -hmm. years, the likes of Serious Decisions, you know, really formalized the waterfall model and, and what demand looks like. And, and a lot of marketers gravitated towards that because it was a really clear way to be able to show the organization, hey, for every dollar that you invest – we can get you three, four, five, ten x return. Mm -hmm. Now that's a great story to be able to tell, because it appeals to a CRO, it appeals mm -hmm. to a CMO, it appeals to a CMO, and so you know you've really seen the last twenty years proliferation of demand and regional marketing, field marketing, account based marketing, mm -hmm. and you know in many respects. Uh, customer marketing has kind of plowed its own furrow, working very closely with a lot of those functions, but not really having the same level of structure. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, what you guys have done working with 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 Jeff and Dana over at Slap Five and I know Gal at, at, at Base. There's lots of folks now coming into the space. Mm -hmm. it's really important because you're bringing a central structure along with the CMA organization as well. But you're bringing a central structure where people can come together, they can learn and they can share ideas and best practices. There's some people who are more advanced in where they are on their journey. Other people mm -hmm. are just discovering customer marketing. So it's a great forum for that. And what I loved about you guys launching the Custom X Awards was it really showcases best practices. Mm -hmm. Gives the, uh, the industry an anchor to recognize folks who are doing really good work. Mm -hmm. And on for two ways. One is, I think we're a collaborative group, so it's great to know who have some, some folks who are doing good work and maybe will be willing to give back to the community. But more importantly, especially at times where the economy is kind of tough, these types mm -hmm. of are important as an external validation, like, hey, we're doing good work for our organizations. And that mm -hmm. helps you think about resources and budgets and programs and various other things within Forter as well. I know. I feel like I'm always so quick to jump to the KPI. What are you focused on? What are your metrics, right? But... I think there's this aspect of grouping them, right? So the acquisition ease, right? So it's it's a way to tie you into your impact that you have on the sales and marketing side of things, right? Like when you have those different umbrellas and those different statements, it's really helpful. I think, especially as somebody who's now just coming into CMA world, right? Who is now embracing a lot of the different things that you are all doing and making impacts in. Yeah. It's helpful for me to navigate how those impacts are happening, right? Um, and different show frames. I know we've talked about this before about you had a really good statement about DNA of a company, right? Yes. Plus your toolkit, right? And that makes your KPI. And that really sat really well with me because um, it's true, right? Because every company is going to look at your measurements differently, right? Depending on how they're set up. Um, I wasn't sure if you wanted to dive into that at all, but I, yeah. because yeah, yeah, definitely. Because, you know, I think one of the dangers can be that mm -hmm. you look at the toolkit exactly the same no matter what company you're in. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one of the things I've gone back and forward philosophically on is as you think about customer marketing and advocacy, 
where does that line be drawn between, hey, we want to be there for our customers and we want to advocate for our customers internally and we want to lift up these people as well, right? I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's also a commercial side to the, to, the, to the competition as well. And it can be difficult because sometimes CMAs don't want to cross that line because they were mm-hmm. well, sales and we have a different relationship with our, with our customers. And I think mm-hmm. trying to find a way to bridge the two is really important. Definitely. So when we when I looked at what Forte was trying to do, we were mm-hmm. still a relatively new entrant into the marketplace. Uh, I, when I joined, we were 150 folks. And so uh, we were all about growth. Right? Mm-hmm. We were at a point where we were trying to go and win the biggest accounts and, and make, make differentiation in the marketplace from mm-hmm. a competitive space. So the best way that we could do that was really to mobilize our customers and have them share their stories about how they're being successful and by extension, mm-hmm. how Forte to help them. Now, if you are a very mature organization, I worked at Iron Mountain for a number of years, right? It was 60 years of history, mm-hmm. very mature customer base. The, the role there is going to be different. That's more like cross and upsell. But where yeah. I am, we've got to go and acquire new customers and new brands to continue to drive revenue. We're, mm-hmm. we're a, a, a private a pre-IPO company. And so there's a lot that goes into thinking about that role as being an acquisition ace and not that I did it on my own. We'll talk about this, but mm-hmm. that very much my focus is how do I mobilize these awesome customers to help support mm-hmm. demand and the sales organization in telling stories that matter. Yeah. So how did he do that? Right. Um, I've seen it firsthand. I've seen everything that you've sent to us um, and that was vetted. But tell us a little bit about the programming that helped sure. provide that, right? The yeah. S300? Yeah, exactly. And so, again, I, I'm going to give a shout out to the customer marketing community because one and the other thing that I love about this mm-hmm. group so much is empathetic, super collaborators. And mm-hmm. we are used to band-aiding and s- using sticking tape to go and do things, right? We're super strategic ninjas. Yeah, strategic ninjas, ninjas, absolutely. And, you know, in many respects, you know, and I don't mean this to sound derogatory at all, but like the Swiss Army Knights, right? We, we will get in there and like, hey, we need a reference program. Okay, we'll go and figure out how to do that. Or, hey, we need speakers for our um, conference. Okay, we'll go and do that. And mm-hmm. we have this ability to go and work with lots of different people. And I, and I think... From my perspective, um, as I looked at my mandate around growth, there's looking at two horizons, right? Mm-hmm. The first horizon is how do I support revenue right now? How do we support the sales team as they think about accelerating and converting leads into deals? So that's, that's my immediate horizon right now. Then the other horizon is about 18 months from now, which is all focused on products, right? What is the next wave of products that will help us continue to be seen as being innovative in the marketplace, drive more value for our customers, and give us new revenue streams. Mm-hmm. So when I think I think about that, that those two horizons, revenue mm-hmm. versus product development, which and- feels incredibly far apart, but they do. Yeah. They do. They do. And, and no. in many respects, there's different parts of the organization that are mm-hmm. in different areas. Mm-hmm. Um, and so from my perspective, as I think about the growth side, the collaboration that was most important to me was with our customer success team and I would say our demand organization, right? Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, and, and I, I didn't work as closely with sales. I know a lot of the CMAs do work very closely with sales. I really mm-hmm. rely on our demand team that's bigger than, than me on my own, right? Um, mm-hmm. I relied on them to help. Uh, build that bridge with a sales organization. But really building relationships with the CSMs who have the, the relationships at the end of the day with the customers mm-hmm. there who can flag uh, even Salesforce, wherever else it might be. Hey, this is a good customer. We're in a healthy relationship here. Uh, they might yep. be interested in building their own brand. Um, and then working very closely with the demand team to say, hey, what story are you trying to push in the marketplace? What channels are you looking to try and use to engage and move prospects down the funnel effectively, and how Mm -hmm. in the right customer at the right time tell the story that matters most. Mm -hmm. That that was my initial focus from a growth side. And then from Mm -hmm. a product side, as I mentioned, we had a customer advisory board. We've just recently launched uh, Friends of Forta. And so it was really working with the product teams to figure out, okay, 
where we put in priority on a messaging from a product perspective. How are we differentiating? How do we want to bring customers in to validate the work we're doing, both within the process, but then also externally to give us that endorsement, that credibility, like, look, we've got products that matter again. First hand. First, First hand. Hand. Yeah. yeah, and some of it's reviews and stuff, right? And I you know, obviously, yeah, of course. Yep. You know, but some of it's definitely reviews as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So I know you've been there for what four years? You set up Porter. Mm -hmm. So this programming, pretty much, you started this program. A lot of times, you need to get like leadership buy-in. It sounds like you a little bit had a more collaborative type situ yes. situation. Um, could you lead us through that for some of our newbies? Yeah, sure. So uh, another thing about CMA industry community, mm -hmm. we're very action oriented, right? We want to roll up our sleeves and get involved. And I'm the same way, right? Doing PR, whatever else. Uh, uh, one of the reasons I actually left PR was we measured a lot of activity. How many mm -hmm. presses, how many articles, how many case studies. And what I realized um, when working in an agency, you have clients, it wasn't resonating. Mm. And so as I've been on this journey within customer marketing, one of the things I've tried to focus on, and I actually use a serious decisions model, which I, I found super helpful, is mm. uh, thinking about your programs in terms of readiness. So what are some of the foundational things you need to do? Like, do you, do you have integrations with Salesforce so you can track what's happening mm. with the accounts? Do you have access to HubSpot, for example, with marketing automation tools? What, what Do you have access to the entire database of customers? It's, it's that foundational stuff that mm -hmm. we understand. And listen, I am not a tech whiz at all. I'm kind of a technology Luddite. But there are a lot of folks in marketing ops and sales ops and, and mm -hmm. demand who know that stuff really well. And if you ask the right questions, we'll help, mm -hmm. right? That, that's the readiness. Yep. Yeah. Then, then activity. So what are you actually going to do once you've got those foundational pieces in place mm -hmm. to move the needle? And then as importantly, it's then tracking what are the results and how are they linked to the top, which is impact. And that impact mm -hmm. is really the company's North Star. Mm. Okay. You're right. And you can connect the thread between readiness, activity, yeah. results, and impact. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're communicating with your, with your key stakeholders in marketing, within other mm -hmm. support functions, and with leadership, then that gives you a, a really a strong approach. Definitely. We did have a question come in. Yeah. Um, Kaylee question, sent us a question. It says, what are some of the magic moments you found work best to connect with clients from an advocacy perspective? Great question, Kaylee. Um, so... Okay. Um, I've been doing this a while, I guess. And, and I think hmm, what it ties into is understanding we're all human at the end of the day. And this is one of the beauties of customer marketing, right, is we get to understand who people are and what motivates them. And so as I think about magic moments, we're, we're constantly in a show me environment, whether it's with our team, whether it's with our organization as an employee or whether it's, you know, in LinkedIn, right? We're all on this call right now yeah. because we have a passion for, for customer marketing, we're interested in learning more. And so as part of that kind of motivation, I, I looked at three broad buckets for those magic moments. It, what? So if you think about your customer, are they motivated because they want to show value within their organization, right? Maybe they're kind of a newer program themselves and they want to be able to show, hey, continue to invest in this because it has a positive impact both on the top line and the bottom line of the, of the organization, right? So that's mm -hmm. one with one area. Another area might be, that's kind of a shout, I, I, I call that kind of shout out. Um, um, the another area might be like, hey, I love what I do and I wanna to continue to build my career. I'm also looking for other opportunities outside the organization, right? Mm -hmm. So that's move out, so uh, move out of the organization. So that's the second motivation. And then the third one is like what we're doing today. People mm -hmm. are so passionate about what they do. They wanna build careers, not jobs. And so it's an opportunity to go and interact with peers, to understand what other companies are doing. Because at the end of the day, customer marketing is a small function generally. I mean, I've, I've know a couple mm -hmm. of uh, companies that have teams of seven, eight, nine, ten, the, the altruists and the, and the service nows of the world. But for the most mm -hmm. part, we tend to be one or two, maybe three people in a, in a company. That's mm -hmm. still a small function. So it's being able to connect with everyone, I think, is su mm -hmm. super important. 
but the magic moments are really it is about connection it's about understanding customers motivations and how you can help them achieve those motivations i just feel like that that motivation piece is like such a big piece to to include in that puzzle right because once you figure out what motivates somebody, right, it's so much easier to get them what they're searching for, right? If you can so, be that leader, lead them to what they're going to be doing, right? And then yes. you build that relationship and then it just, it builds from there, right? It does. It does. And, and they don't, all three of those don't discreetly operate, right? Sometimes people will be doing all three at once. They might be looking to move up mm -hmm. in their organization. They might be looking to kind of next opportunity move out. And then they also want to do shout out. And I think to, to Kaylee's question, you know, we've got multiple examples of where we've had people come to us and say, look, we love what you do for us. We see the real value. I'm looking mm -hmm. to advance my career as well you know, I'm willing to do speaking opportunities. I'm willing to do workshops. I'm willing to do a case study. I'm willing to do a video because they see mm -hmm. as part of themselves building their own brand in the industry. You know, and that's not, that's not going to be the case for everyone, right? I, I love public speaking, so I'm happy to go and speak on the stage. Mm -hmm. or, but for other yeah. people, they don't like to or the company won't let them, but they're happy to do a review. Mm -hmm. They're happy to maybe do a small yeah. internet workshop or a dinner or something else. Um, mm -hmm. And it's motivation and their personal interest and then kind of matching up how does advocacy support that definitely and you know we actually have another question from caroline davis david what's your favorite part about your role so i think i'd be remiss to say that caroline is most my my favorite part of my role um caroline and i work together at Forter. so um no in, in all in all honesty um uh, you know working with caroline's been great we actually just launched um last october friends of Forter. Um, uh, okay. which is our, our advocacy um, hub. We, we're using base for that. And that's been a really great way to um, engage with our customer base. It's also been mm -hmm. great to see how the sales organization has really started to embrace uh, Friends of Falter as well um, and actually look at it as a way to bring different ideas to uh, the customer base about, you know, even job spots and various other things, right? So launching... Mm -hmm that back in in october at our first impact conference uh, has been has been um a, a really great uh, so that's a program side and then from a personal side um i just love the white space i love working with different people to mm -hmm. figure out interesting and innovative solutions and that's one of the things i would mm -hmm. say of water is we get a lot of latitude we built a lot of relationship a lot of credibility we get a lot of latitude to do different things and different programs uh, so that's being really cool and I think mm -hmm. on that and, and a lot of people on this will relate to everybody got zoomed out during COVID right how many times did you get on mm -hmm. a new webinar? like oh my gosh this is the sixth webinar of the day so uh, mm -hmm. one of my mind from that perspective is we actually started to look at okay how do we create a virtual experience that's going to still be mm -hmm. informative but that's actually going to be something that's memorable uh, and so, again, working mm -hmm. with the demand team and the CS team, we actually went out to some of our uh, more recognizable brand customers. So like Opus One Winery, uh, Therabody, which is, the, you know, the Theraguns. And so we did a whole mm -hmm. series of what we call Sweet Talks, where we had executives from mm -hmm. these companies come and talk about their organizational journey. And oh, by mm -hmm. the way, um, we had... Mm -hmm. Head Vitner from Opus One joined. We did a virtual wine tasting. We also had the, the uh, a founder of Therabody. Yeah, no, right? It was. I mean, we got great. great response. Me up. <laughs> Wasn't the cheapest promotion ever done, but it was. It was very mm -hmm. well received. We did something similar where we had one of the Therabody um, experts, massage experts. We sent a Therabody mini to everyone, and they could do like a, a mm -hmm. desk side pressure point massage with the tools mm -hmm. and. and have this founder of the company talk about his journey and that kind of stuff as well. So that was something that, mm -hmm. again, we saw great interest in. And yeah. you mentioned coming, bringing it back to customer X. It was one of mm -hmm. the initiation points for some of the account-based marketing that actually landed a, a couple of big deals last year as well, right? So um, mm. that, that was kind of really interesting. Definitely. So I feel like we're talking a lot about your successes. I wonder if there was ever a time where you felt you had to pivot, right? Or reevaluate what you were goaling, right? Yeah. 
Um, did you run into anything like that during this time? All the time. I mean, I think one of the mm -hmm. challenges of doing experimentation is mm -hmm. not everything is going to, to work. And mm -hmm. I think that's where cultural fit is so important because we're very fortunate at Forta that the attitude is failure's normal, mm -hmm. learn fast, act fast, and what's a better next? How can we do things better next time? And so there's been a number of things that we've tried in the past, and I'm just trying to think about um, some of the different ideas. Uh, we've tried to do like workshops with different, um, different industries that just haven't come together the way that we wanted to. Um, mm -hmm. We've also in the past tried to um, uh, mobilize customers to do speaking opportunities at some of our big conferences um, and that hasn't always worked out be either because of travel issues or other stuff mm -hmm. where we've unfortunately like literally of the day of not being able to do it, you know? So there's those natural things, you know, again, dealing with humans, right? That yeah. are complex. Learning to pivot, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I think the other thing as well is, you know, again, I come back to the Swiss army knife issue where, as a practitioner, you'll get approached by lots of different parts of the organization to get involved mm -hmm. in something. Again, whether it might be referencing or, hey, we need more reviews on, on, on G2 Crowd or Gartner because mm -hmm. we're coming up to the war season or we're getting beat by our competitors or it might be mm -hmm. uh, hey, we need to expand our customer advisory board. And I, and I mm -hmm. saw one of the common challenges I hear a lot is how do you prioritize? Mm. Like you only have so many hours in the day. In fact, you've only got so many customers who are willing to be advocates at any one time. How do you make mm -hmm. sure that you're really uh, applying the right work against the right project at the right time with the right customer to have the biggest mm -hmm. impact? So back to some of the planning, of, of course. Um, yeah, but I mean, also, that's like all the things falling into place, right? You know? It's, yeah. It, it's also getting comfortable with saying no. Mm. Not easy for marketers to do and certainly not easy for customer marketers to do, right? Mm -mm. No, definitely not. Yeah. So, so I do have a question. We've been talking a lot about your successes. Where do you see, because I know you just launched your customer advocacy, right? Where do you see the next couple of years going for Forder? What's the plans? Do you have any big plans? Do you see it? Like, what's the future of yeah. customer marketing? I, so, so I think it's interesting, right? Because as I said at the top of the call, as a company, mm -hmm. the founders really took a very smart approach to helping merchants and retailers mm -hmm. push that through online. And so the data we have now as we look across our global merchant network is unsurpassed. So it's great. And we, we've mm -hmm. built a really strong track record, as I mentioned, with the likes of you know, the added assets and the Nordstrom's and the price lines of the world. And we, we continue to grow which is awesome. I see the next couple of years uh, as we mature in doing two things for customer advocacy. One is really continuing to support a very targeted acquisition of, of, of accounts and how do you continue to support sales and acceleration. I think the other thing that we could do a better job of is we haven't really focused as much on retention or cross and upsell. And I'm sure there's people on this call like, well, actually, that's the, that's the first thing I'm worried about, right? I mean, I've got to mm -hmm. focus on onboarding and the customer journey mapping and all that kind of stuff because our existing customers make up so much of our revenue. And I think as we look at Forta in the next couple of years, we're going to get to more of that mix uh, where we have a stronger balance between new growth, net new, mm -hmm. and growth from existing and so I definitely see the work that, you know, Carolyn's doing around advocacy and building those relationships, understanding, work with the CSMs and the, um, and the account executives on understanding where our cross-sell opportunities are. And it, it really ties into that second horizon, right, Becky, which is product. Mm -hmm. And how do we help the product team as they think about their product lifecycle management process in injecting mm -hmm. the customer voice at the various points that are going to have the biggest impact to discovery and validation, mm -hmm. marketing, and then commercialization of the product. Yeah, right. Because as you focus and, you know, everything evolves, right? It's natural. Things are evolving. And yeah. as things are evolving, your customer voice can lead that evolution, right? 
And it's just how you harness the customer voice to utilize that. And um, yes. which is incredibly powerful, you know, um, and can be very powerful, especially from a product led perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Product led, definitely. And then a customer led. Mm-hmm. And we talked about this a little bit before, Becky. I think mm-hmm. one of the challenge for customer marketing practitioners is to help organizations get comfortable in thinking about the longer term horizon. Mm-hmm. And it's your reaction when I said 18 months is like, wow, mm-hmm. that's a long time from now, doesn't right? it? Yeah. Yeah. But in many respects, if you think about it, think about 18 months in your own career. Mm. Like how long you've been with Trust Radius? I've been with Forte for four years. Trust Radius for four. Right, yeah. exactly. So, mm-hmm. so where where I'm trying to push a little bit more is think about the lifetime value of the contact, not the lifetime value of the contract. And that's fine mm. to think about, right? Because sales yeah. carry quarter, and they are quarter to quarter. They've got to continue to hit the quarters to not only make sure they get their bonuses and their incentives, but make sure they have a job. So, so I get that. And I get mm. that quarterly is really important if you're a public company or thinking about going public and you have to re- report to Wall Street. So I get that as well. Mm-hmm. But if you think about the lifetime value of the contact, it gets into the personal journey that that individual's on. Then mm-hmm. most might change over the course of two, three, four, five years, right? And how do you continue to be relevant to them as they continue to change roles? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's important because in many respects, your customers are your best assets in selling. And also people are very dynamic. They move on, right? They move to new new roles as well. So if you're um, a trust radius customer right now, mm-hmm. You as a team would want to make sure that if that person moves on to somewhere else, that Trust Radius is one of the first five or 10 calls they make to their friendly partners and tech vendors. Be like, hey, Becky, I, I, I think there's a big opportunity here. I would love to figure out how we can work mm-hmm. again. Definitely. You know, we see that value as well. Um, you had mentioned it before, calling it lifetime value. And I feel like it's, very true, right? Um, as people evolve and move forward, it, you've created that relationship. It's not just a transactional relationship. You know what motivates them. You know what they want out of the relationship, right? So it, you're growing it. And it doesn't just stop when the person moves on, right? That relationship, it keeps going. And I think that's a really good point. And the thing, you know, interesting thing, if you talk to a lot of leadership, they'll say, hey, we've mm-hmm. got to get to the executive buyer, right? And this is one of my mm-hmm. thoughts submission for the customer x award was we really mapped out who are the key people within the buying center and how Mm. we engaging them throughout the course of the journey the sales journey with Mm -hmm. different activities different type of messaging different type of content and that was over a two-year period but i Mm -hmm. think you look at some of the more traditional companies like tech companies the ibms the oracles of the world the saps you know what they've done a great job is over many years building C-level relationships. Mm. If you talk to any leader within any company, they're like, yeah, we've got to get to the executive buyer. We've got to get to that C-suite. Now, if you play mm. in the long game, and again, this isn't going to maybe benefit me mm-hmm. in my next 10 years, but we're building relationships right now with people who are starting on as fraud managers or e-commerce managers who are very ambitious. They want the opportunity mm-hmm. to be a CDO or a CIO and so if you can nurture those relationships over 10 or 15 years, mm-hmm. then by, by it's organic and slow, but you are by <laughs> default going to have C-level relationships. And we've seen it even within my four years at Forto, you know, a VP of mm. e-commerce, for example, who is now a CDO, you know, so mm. are those examples mm-hmm. are getting where you're starting to build cohorts of C-level folks who have known mm-hmm. you as an organization or trusted you as an organization for five, six, seven years through all of the evolution of e-commerce, you know, COVID, changing consumer behavior, Mm -hmm. and you're a trusted partner. Definitely. Now, you've been in this role for a little while. What surprised you? What surprises have you met? What have you been most surprised about, I guess, in your role? I've been most surprised um, by a couple of things. I'm gonna start with the customer side first. I've been surprised a little bit about how passionate people are 
mm. about their role and about e-commerce. And as part of that surprise is also a lot of people's willingness to do really interesting things with us and take it like a little bit of a risk, right? Get involved in mm-hmm. something like a virtual event, you know, like, okay, that sounds great. We haven't done one before, but we'll, we'll, we'll do it. Or we'll get on a plane and come and speak at Impact, for example, mm-hmm. um, because they see the, sh- the shared value. And, and so that's been the surprise and a delight. I think also the thing I've been pleasantly surprised about w- within my current role is for a long time, I knew the power of customer marketing, but I wasn't necessarily in a role or in an organization where it made as much sense. Hmm. So I had lots of ideas. We did customer advisory boards and various other things, but I had lots of ideas about what customer advocacy and customer marketing could be. And it wasn't mm-hmm. really until I joined Forta where I had a chance to bring a lot of those ideas to life. Mm-hmm. And I was pleasantly surprised by how supportive the executive team were. And mm-hmm. I, I would say that's the advantage of working for a growth company. I know Vinay, for example, is very involved still in a lot of your programs. Um, mm-hmm. Similar for my leadership, right? Mm-hmm. We were 50 people and they were involved very much in the advisory board and, and getting programs off. And the Impact Conference, which we launched last year, was really Laurent's vision from mm. 2019. So that's what I've been pleasantly surprised is that the execs have embraced the work we're doing, see value. Mm-hmm. I know sometimes we're going to make more of a bet on things when maybe the economy is a little tough and like it would be easier not to spend that money. Like, all right, we're going we're gonna to double down on this. We're going to make an investment mm-hmm. that we believe will pay out long term. But in the medium to short term, we're not quite so sure, but we, th- we think this is the right thing to do. Definitely. Um, I have a couple questions about your program specifically. So yeah. uh, before you started doing like the customer advocacy programming, um, when you were starting to get your advocates per se involved in your sales cycles, yeah. Um, what what were they getting from it? Were was it just the opportunity to be front facing? Was it what type of like motivators were you providing? Great question. Yeah, and so and so it's subtle, right? Because mm-hmm. I don't. I, I think most people would be like, you know, I don't want to feel like I'm just being a shill for your company and mm-hmm. that I'm an active part of the sales cycle. So we never. It's not a transaction. You're not just getting swag, right? You know what I mean. So like, yeah, what exactly. what were they getting? You know, and that's that's the important part, right? We've never re- really relied on on swag and that kind of stuff. Yes, through friends and mm-hmm. forth. And end points and they can get different items and stuff. What we've mm-hmm. really focused more on is making the connections within the industry. So even when we've and we've done some fun stuff as well, right? We did Porsche, uh, the Porsche experience in Atlanta and in LA, so people mm. could go and drive fast cars if they wanted to. Uh, again, we've done the virtual tastings and the virtual experiences. So we we've been able to align a little bit around some of the people's passions, like, oh yeah, I would love to. Go and go and race a car, but mm-hmm. at the, end of the day where we've our position. Like, we love our cars. There's I know, that, right? It's true. across the board. Yeah. yeah. Um, but from the get go, we always said to the customers, right? Um, we don't want you to be up there just saying how great Forte is. Mm-hmm. We want you to be able to talk about your journey and about the mm-hmm. success that you've had. And of course, you must get some questions about how is that work. Yeah. Don't feel compelled. And mm-hmm. invariably, even at Impact and doing workshop, various workshops and stuff, um, customers will themselves talk about the work they've been doing with Forta, right? But it, it's never mm-hmm. something that we've mandated. And I think that's super important is providing people with the platform that makes sense to them, meets their needs and their motivations, mm-hmm. and the platform to be able to, again, it, it's, it's connection and, and understanding best practices. And mm-hmm. a lot of what happens for us, even with the advisory board and stuff is, our members will have conversations that we're not involved in just because they're trying to figure mm-hmm. out, hey, I've got this problem with a, a particular program or whatever else I'm doing. What, what mm-hmm. are you? So that, that for us is that tying people into this sense of Fora is part of, but it's mm-hmm. really about the broader community. Right. Out of all the things that you've accomplished so far at Porter, what is what are you most proud of? You know, I'm going to say... Um, 
two things. Can I cheat and do two things, Becky? Is that right? Of course. Sure. So, so one I'm not going to slap your hand. Go for uh, it. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Just waiting, waiting for the camera to go black. You know, like, no, no more. He's done. He's talked too much. We're done. Uh, <laughs> one is um, the, the, the program I got nominated for, the Customer X Con. Mm -hmm. The Customer X Award. Because um, I knew in myself that I, I can never carry a quarter. People have said to me, mm -hmm. hey, if you go into sales, you do great. I'm like, mm -hmm. no thought of carrying that number every quarter would crush me. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I knew that I could never go into straight demand mm -hmm. because having the influence uh, of the attribution model, you know, like I, I was never that good at the, mm -hmm. the side or the programming side. Yeah. But, but the, the working with the demand team on the F300 program, which is, you know, the, mm -hmm. the accounts that we're targeting for Forta, that, that gave me an opportunity to do what I'm best at, is understand what mm -hmm. customers are motivated by, be innovative and agile working with other teams, um, and really kind of be focused on how do we get the best outcome, the best impact for the organization. Mm -hmm. And so the, the work I've been super proud of is nothing, nothing tends to happen big bang, right? It's all iterative. Mm -mm. So even the, some of the online stuff where we saw a great response, um, the virtual stuff, uh, we, we started to get some really good contacts from these key accounts from the F300 that we then transitioned as people started to come back and do some interesting things around like the National Retail Federation show, which there's 30,000 people. The mm -hmm. Salesforce and SAP, they, those are the big tech vendors that own those space. But we mm -hmm. were able to work with likes of Nike and other companies to do a really interesting off-site, right, uh, off, 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 off trade show floor event actually at Nike's House of Innovation in Midtown mm. and start working with the demand team to really figure out within the, the, the account-based marketing for some of these big F300 accounts, how are we engaging the buying center, mm -hmm. customer stories to mobilize to support that, mm -hmm. how do experiences that sometimes were with customers involved as well, and how do we understand moving a prospect from stage two to stage six, which is ultimately close? And what are the various mm -hmm. stuff that we, we need to do there? And as importantly, and this is one area that I think customer marketers need to invest a little bit more time in, potentially. I mean, it's a blanket statement. So I'm sorry, some of you are like, all right, we'll hear what you got to say, and then we'll decide. But <laughs> it, it, how do you then understand influence over attribution? Because I don't need for the demand team to be like, all right, this pipeline is attributed to customer marketing. That's not the goal, mm -hmm. right? That's their goal. But what mm -hmm. I understand, and we, we have Salesforce campaigns where we'll attach or associate customers to mm -hmm. the campaign or the child campaign. I do yeah. want to be able to track how much pipeline did customers influence and how much revenue do customers influence. Mm -hmm shows my impact on the, on, on, the, on the process, right? And I want to get more sophisticated in understanding, do customer activations actually help to accelerate between stages? Does it reduce the amount of time to move from that initial conversation into an RFP, into a proof of concept, you know? So, mm -hmm. so I want to get more sophisticated, but for, I'm super proud of the work we've done collaboratively working with mm -hmm. uh, demand team and sales and products and other people to have a really codified approach to landing multiple multi-million dollar accounts mm -hmm. so that's, as you should yeah right yeah and um, to wrap up our last question and hopefully we have a couple more in the chat come in we'll see um what type like what kind of advice can you give to other customer marketers right now who are looking to tie their work into sales acquisitions 100 percent. so i think um, aligning with the sales leadership is super important. I kind of did it a little bit vicariously through the head of demand, uh, re regional marketing in North America, but understanding what are the sales priorities. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, at the end of the day, revenue drives everything, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it could be account-based marketing. It could be there's like 10 target accounts that if we can land those this year, that will help us make our number. It could be that we're looking to go into a new industry, for example, that we've never maybe had much success penetrating, but would, is a potentially huge total adjustable market. Um, I think understanding the business context is super important. 
Um, mm -hmm. And then working with the demand team to set realistic goals, uh, not only around the, the funnel and, you know, the um, MQ, M, MQLs, SALs, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but also understanding where you can build your metrics that matter to. Mm -hmm. And getting agreement from sales and demand teams or whoever else you're partnering with, yeah, that that makes perfect sense that we should be tracking that as well um, and working with the marketing ops and sales ops to make sure that that's built into whatever CRM you're using to support that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last question because you brought up the metrics, right? What metrics are you tracking? What are your big KPIs? So no matter um, influence revenue, okay. influence pipeline, are definitely uh, the two big ones. Um, mm -hmm. We we um, as a as a as a team have a north star around like um, uh, around pipeline creation, so uh, and revenue. So that that definitely uh, ties into that. Those are the one. Those are the primary ones right now. Obviously, working with um, Carolyn, we're looking at a little bit further down the the funnel. Effectively, mm -hmm. with the quarter is. You know, how are we engaging with customers in that community? Are we starting to identify a really nice pipeline of folks who could be um, maybe helping us in other ways, whether that's simple reviews or coming to speak at an industry event or doing kind of live Friends of Porter meetups? So I'm super excited about kind of tracking more engagement metrics as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other piece that I want to start working on, and again, it's, it's a little bit time, a little bit maturity, is putting in place a really robust customer journey mapping process and figuring out how to measure that effectively. Well, it doesn't look like we have very many other questions, um, but this is great getting a chance to talk with you, David, and getting your secret sauce, if you will, on how to tie in your programming into sales acceleration. Um, been great chatting. I do have a quick plug for Customer X, and I'll let you plug yeah. it. Can I do a plug as well for customer X? Of so course. Please people, do my job for me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So people <laughs> are going to be maybe on this call or listen to this and be like, oh, my program is not as developed as David's. Mm. And I, what, I'd, what I would say to them is that's okay. Apply mm -hmm. anyway. You know why? Because you can use it as a vehicle to bring more um, attention and promote the program within your organization. So even if you're like, you know what, I don't know if I'm going to win this year, mm -hmm. I submit because it gives me a chance to kind of pull together different data points. It allows me to work with my leadership and say, hey, I want to submit for this. And even if you mm -hmm. get shorted, that's great because it's it's advancing the work that you're doing. 100%. It also gives you this opportunity to start to understand, and if you attend Customer XCon in October, mm -hmm. All right, what is a standard? Who, what types of programs are winning? Mm -hmm. And so that gives you a, a, something to aim for. And Rome wasn't built in a day. As I mentioned, incremental is huge. And so just the acts of, of, of applying is so key to actually giving you more rigor around your program and the value that you're trying to drive for your organization. 100%. And also nominations go live for our second annual, um, May 17th. So uh, looking forward to getting everybody's submissions and seeing them there. Um, David, are you going to be applying for any of our other awards this year? I don't know if you're going to allow two-time winners, but yeah, I, I definitely want to. I, I'm keen on uh, working with Carolyn to see if we can do more around kind of the community-based stuff this year. Um, right. I think, as I mentioned to you, I was very prescriptive in which category that I wanted mm -hmm. to nominate for last year because the acquisition stuff is so important to me and it's such an area mm -hmm. where customer marketing hasn't traditionally played a massive role. But mm -hmm. uh, here we're gonna be looking a little bit more at the, uh, the community-based stuff, so mm -hmm. yes. Awesome, well, please join us this fall um, at the Customer XCon. Um, super excited, we have a whole award showcase that we provide there in person. Uh, we don't get to do much in person anymore, so it's great to actually get the opportunity to do that, especially when it comes to awards, so. Looking forward yes. to seeing everybody there. And thanks again to you and to Christy and Benet and mm -hmm. the Trust Radius team, obviously to Jeff and the Slap 5 crew with Dana as well, because uh, without you guys doing this and putting the hard work in and figuring out how to promote the community, uh, we'd be missing a big piece. So uh, thank you so much. Yeah, we appreciate it. And then join David. They have a conference coming up this fall, right, David? 
Yeah, so um, actually the week before Customer XCon, we have uh, Impact Conference, um, which is our second annual conference. Uh, anybody in e-commerce space, uh, definitely open to all. And that is, as it's going across the screen right now, October 11th in New York City. So uh, reach out to me through LinkedIn if that's an area of interest as well. Awesome. Well, thank you, David, so much for your time today and everybody who joined us. Um, we appreciate it. And I'm sure you got some great stuff out of this one, for sure. Thanks, Becky. Yeah, thank Bye. you. Bye.